Joining me now is Alex Holmes of Plateau Energy Metals. Peru. <laughs> it's been quite a year for you in Peru this year, hasn't it? Can you give us a little recap of what happened, uh, you know, how you wound up in that situation, where we are now? Because, you know, everybody who, who's looking at this incredible lithium find that you have is saying, okay, but where do we go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, no, let's, uh, let's run through that. So last year we met at PDAC, and, and uh, shortly after we met, we put out our resource update. So we nearly doubled the resource, and middle of the year, uh, we came against a, um, a dispute, an administrative dispute, with the Geologic Administration Group in Peru. Mm -hmm. And that related to a portion of our concessions, uh, about 32 of our 151 concessions. Okay. And some of those, one of them impacts the, our lithium resource, and one, six of them impact our uranium resource. So it was a very challenging situation for us, to be honest. Um, we fast forward to today, uh, what we're focused on is, um, we're focused on moving our lithium project forward as a standalone. Mm -hmm. However, on the concessions, uh, we're looking at an administrative process, which is a resolution that uh, we hope to achieve through the interest politically of the country. Mm -hmm. And a judicial process, which is a uh, bit more of a drawn out process. Um, but we did have uh, some success recently in getting an injunction on our concessions uh, which allows us to effectively everything reverts back into our name mm -hmm. and um, and protects our interests while we seek a, a, a judicial outcome. And importantly, um, it's the first time the law has spoken. So the law did their analysis on the things and effectively said the company complied with the general mining law uh, and the payments were made on time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it all came down to a timing of payments issue, which seems like a bit of a ridiculous administrative related item. Uh, however, we're dealing with bureaucracy. Right, and it causes you hiccups <coughs> along the way. It gets in the way of you being able to go after the development of what is becoming uh, a vitally important uh, resource as we transition into uh, a far more electrified and battery-based uh, transportation network. Yeah, it is, um, I mean, this is mining. Yeah. Mining has risks. Um, you know, I think we've got the right team in place to resolve this. Uh, it's going to take time. In the meantime, we have a, call it a, a smaller project, economic uh, study out, mm -hmm. that also highlights it's a very long mine life and actually a large scale lithium chemical project. So we have something to move forward with. Yeah, that's the Falchani uh, uh, yeah, uh, project. Let's talk about uh, what we now know about the scale of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, so we recently, about three, four weeks ago, put out a um, preliminary economic assessment, mm -hmm. and we showed two scenarios. Uh, one, one scenario was our, call it our smaller version, our stage one project, um, which removed the one concession that we're currently dealing with administratively. Yeah. And uh, we had an eight, over 840 million NPV, 26 year mine life, uh, low second quartile operating cost. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very interesting project in terms of how it would fit into the supply chain. Probably most importantly is it's a low impurity battery quality chemical product mm -hmm. to fit into that chain. Which is vitally important, isn't very it? Very important. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with the, the, the fact that the rock itself is clean to begin with. So we're not having to deal with some impurities that you might find in some of the other deposit styles. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we've been able to show a project that can ramp up. Mm -hmm. uh, so we ramp up in two phases. And then we've shown a, a stage one and two project, which is includes the other concession that's impacted, and that's over a billion and a half NPV, 33-year mine life. And what we do with that one is we ramp up a third phase. Mm -hmm. And in the third phase, we would become the largest lithium chemical uh, project in the world. So that would put it larger than the biggest producer today. Now, it's, the market's not big enough for that today. However, mm -hmm. uh, based on the growth trajectory, uh, we think it's a project that can grow with the market. Mm -hmm. and I think that helps it stand apart. So the geography of Peru puts you, of course, in South America and directly across the Pacific Ocean from that Asia market. What's the supply line from where you are to Asia, or is that the, the route or the, the best market for you to be uh, selling the lithium into? <clears throat> I think uh, certainly proximity to yep. Asia makes sense. Uh, I think we'll be focusing on uh, a few markets. Yeah. Um, the European market is what I like to call the second wave. Um, the China electric vehicle adoption and the chemical conversion capacity, capital production 
is largely situated in China today. Mm -hmm. However, Europe is very rapidly advancing their supply chain, and they're right. looking to build it out from cathode processing all the way through battery cell assembly plants and then the, the car companies. So the car companies are moving forward fast, and so we're looking at that as a uh, possibility as well. Mm -hmm. And North America, I think, will will catch up in time. Yes. Really, it's Tesla today, but you know we'll get there. And I think one of the the pieces of our project that stands out uh, and why it would be interesting into those North American and European supply chains is it's a very clean lithium chemical project, uh, and that's part of the intent of the way we've scoped it out mm -hmm. is to have it clean. So you indicated that you uh, issued two PEAs, or Preliminary Economic Assessments, of the project. And under both scenarios, uh, uh, scenario one, you get all your concessions back. How does it look? Scenario two, where you don't have them all back, what's, what's your projected uh, uh, analysis there? Yeah, so that was that's our stage one project. Yeah. Our, um, we called it our alternative case mm -hmm. um, in, in our press release. Um, but that is the restricted case, and that's still a 26-year mine life. It ramps up from, I would call it, a medium-sized lithium chemical project to a large one mm -hmm. over a two-phase ramp-up. And um, it's still low second quartile cost. So we're able to show that we have a project regardless. Um, let's put the, call it the negative noise, into the background. Mm -hmm. Focus on the value of the company today, which is still uh, significantly disconnected to the peer group, even in today's environment. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget that as we move to the West, there's also additional exploration. So I don't think we need to necessarily add additional lithium mm -hmm. into our resource today. It's a large deposit. But you know, the alternative case may look like the base case mm -hmm. in three or four years' time anyways. Hmm. Where are we at from now through to development? What are the stages that you have to move through? Yeah, so I think uh, our focus in 2020 is really going to be on uh, optimizing the lithium process route. Yeah. So we've done a lot of work uh, over our 18, 20 month period to understand the best economic route mm -hmm. and, and the optimal recoveries. And the work that we like to do in the optimization is looking at different things that may lead to OPEX and CAPEX reductions. Um, the other thing we'll look at is byproducts. So we've been doing some work since October with our metallurgical lab out of Australia we work with. Mm -hmm. And they're focusing on byproducts SOP, which is a specialty chemical fertilizer, yeah. and two products, cesium and rubidium. And SOP, none of these are in the economics today. This is just purely lithium economics. Mm. And the SOP is a really interesting dynamic because the Peru market's about a third of the total South American import market. Right. It's been growing 18% a year for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it has a advantage of feeding a market that has zero domestic sources today that relies 100% on imports, yeah. and it will ramp up as we ramp up in time. Yeah. So that's another component of the business, and us sharing that with investors, that test work hopefully by the end of March, uh, and then I think we'll be able to advance the stages. And then from here, 2020 and beyond, then we get into small pilot scale testing, pilot plant testing, through pre-feasibility, feasibility, and ultimately it's interesting, of course, that you're that you're moving as quickly as you are on the lithium side because, as a company, you didn't start out in lithium uh, exploration at all. You started right. with uranium, and as you were kept moving along that that vein, you then you you strike lithium. We talked about the issue with the concessions, but let's come back and talk about your uranium, uh, um, you know, property at the moment. Where where is that at right now? There's a little bit of limbo around some of those concessions that are still uncertain. Mm -hmm. But your uranium deposit is still there. The market is is still you yes. know, shaking itself yes. out. So okay, so you ride this out a little bit. <laughs> Let, let's talk about that. that yeah, that I think yeah. Um, our 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 view on that project. So geographically, it's it's in the same overall land package. Yes, right. About twenty five kilometers away, in a different package of rocks. Yeah. So it sits stratigraphically above where the lithium deposit mm -hmm. sits, um, but twenty five kilometers away. And there was a PEA done in 2016. Yeah. Um, the Iranian market really hasn't rebounded since then. Um, no. We can't ignore the fact it's a low capital cost, low operating cost project. Um, there's something we're working with the government and they're actively working on is the regulations around export and transport of yellow cake. So every international atomic energy agency country 
needs to have regulations around that in place so canada has it the us has it u k australia etc and the government talked about putting it out on a quite an aggressive timeline which we thought was a little bit aggressive but uh, as recently as a couple of months ago the ministry said we're actively working on it and hope to have those out mm -hmm. the second half of 2020 yeah for us that's a clear sign um, the government supports there to see this through to get those regulations in place and at that point for us it really makes sense to then refocus some of our capital um, on the uranium project mm -hmm. and I think we'll start off with small capital allocations to incrementally improve the project uh, from, an, from an economic standpoint and then when the uranium market comes back um, there are to be honest I can't course, predict right? when it's going to come back no but we are seeing a move towards uh, nuclear uh, power generation more and more the appetite for that is growing and indications are you know five six seven years from now there's going to be a considerable number of new projects that will either be coming online or will be in development yeah and so you know that gives us a, a bit of a benchmark to to be sort of aiming towards is seeing where the uranium market's going to go. I mean, we can't rely 100% on renewable energy yet. Right. Right. Uranium, nuclear energy has a place, a role mm -hmm. in the world. It's a stable source of energy. It's mm -hmm. clean. Yeah. Um, I think that we will see, uh, what we have seen is the last nine years, there have been, there's been no uh, dollars invested in development yes. of uranium projects. Yeah. There's been no new projects that have come online. Mm -hmm. Uh, the existing projects have either curtailed production, gone to care and maintenance, or sh simply shut down completely. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to look far to uh, Cameco, yeah. a great Canadian company, who shut down MacArthur River. They don't plan to bring that back on until your aim is $50 a pound in the contract market. The contract market is $32 a pound, roughly, maybe yeah. inching up. The spot market's 26 Right. So. Uh, when that happens, by the time we get to $50 a pound contract market, I think what we get zero value for today will be a very different story. Yeah. I think the uranium equities in general will be yeah. in a much different position. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an interesting couple of years uh, as you move forward, but uh, it looks like you're positioning yourself to, to uh, address the needs of a couple of different markets, and maybe the timing work might just work out right to have uh, all issues cleared up uh, just as you're ready to hit those marketplaces. We're working on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks Absolutely. for coming in and sharing this, and I hope that you'll come back next year and give us a, give us a further update. We'd love to. Okay. okay. Great. Thanks, Steve. See you next time.